Hi guys, my name is James, and today we are going to be making something very different. I've been making lots of bags on my channel, and now we are going to be making a clutch bur bag, sorry, or a purse. Um, so it's going to be in dark blue, and definitely more female than anything I've done so far. The reason I wanted to do this was simply for something different. Uh, I'm not commissioned to do this or anything, I just wanted to see uh, what I could make with a much different a very different colour and design uh, something that was clearly different from what I usually show on my channel and just just have a bit of fun really. So the overall dimensions of the uh, rectangles I am now cutting are 25 by 17 centimetres for the back piece, uh, 25 by 14 centimetres for the front piece, so slightly uh, not as tall as the back piece and the top piece is 22 by 10 centimeters and you'll see all the different pieces come together as we speak as I speak here I'm then cutting out the basic shape out of these rectangles um, I'm not giving you the exact precise measurements here because uh, simply because I did it all by ear really or by eye and just designed it the way I thought it was supposed to be designed uh, or the way it felt like it should be designed so your designs may vary, your uh, results may vary. Um, in in any case, I'm quite happy, I'm very happy with the way it turned out here and uh, very pleased with that. So there we go, that's 25 by 17 for the big rectangle uh, that became what you see in the back there. And then I added a small, a small decoration piece on the front. Um, I'm making this out of veg tan leather that has been dyed using Fibing's Pro Dye or Pro Oil Dye in Midnight Blue. Very happy with the way the colour turned out here. Uh, again, I'm trying to find a proper way of dyeing things. I'm still messing about here. I believe this was 100% uh, dye and then just lots and lots of Neatsfoot oil to then bring back some of that flexibility in the leather. In the end, I'm very glad of the result in terms of how the dye performed and how the leather turned out. It was, it's not too dry, um, just flexible enough. Um, another thing I would like to note is that I am using 2.5 millimeter leather for the outside panels and on the inside panels I am using 1.4 millimeter leather and the reason I'm doing this is because first of all I wanted it to be very sturdy on the front and back and flap however I also wanted to hide the stitching a bit like I did on the rando seru bag in a previous video I wanted to hide the stitching for the sides uh, inside the bag and you'll see what I mean by there uh, the top flap is going to be attached through, uh, well, thanks to one centimetre here of leather. You can see I've left a space here on the front, uh, sorry, on the back and flap portions of the bag. Bear in mind every time this is doubled up, so you're seeing me glue the, f the, the flap here. Um, so the inside is the 1.4mm leather and the outside is the 2.5mm leather. Again, this gives me a nice rigidity. Uh, before we get started, the first thing I want to do is attach the front decoration piece. Now, originally this was going to be hiding uh, the latch system or the closing mechanism that we will be seeing later, but I wanted to initially hide it inside here. Uh, I was thinking of having a magnet or something, but then uh, in the end I decided to go for something much simpler that I've already done because I'm trying so many new things already with this bag, I didn't want to go overboard. I am using Lin Cablé au Chinois, which is one of the best, best strings you can get for this. Um, I, I don't know if it's waxed or not at this point, I can't I think it might be pre-waxed. Oh, well. in any case, I, I have got a bar of beeswax and the first thing I do is go ahead and make sure that every single strand gets a generous coating of beeswax to protect it, to hold it steady. Um, I have glued that decoration piece on before punching holes through with my oh, basically um, stitching prawns, pring, prawns, you can see them in the background there, uh, stitching forks I would say, and uh, that enables me to then go ahead and saddle stitch quite simply. Uh, saddle stitching is one of the best ways of stitching if you're not um, accustomed to saddle stitching, I would definitely suggest you go and check it out and find out what it is and why it's so good because it really is much, it's, it's the stronger form of stitching. It might take a bit more time, but uh, it works brilliantly and gives you very nice results. 
At this point, I'm taking care of the inside, uh, well, the sides of the bag. This is going to be the piece of leather on the sides, and I'm doubling up the end pieces here just to make sure that the fold of the bag looks really good. I'm still using my Dremel once more to uh, get a really nice burnish on the edge. I'll, I'll go into detail about the burnish once more later on in this video. So uh, I did decide to try coating it with beeswax at the very end of the burnish process and it worked out quite well. Um, my homemade sa <laughs> saddle pony or stitching pony here um, works brilliantly as well and this is me just finishing up the touches there with a nice little bit of stitching along the sides. Uh, the original side piece was actually quite long, longer than I expected it to be, so I ended up cutting it, uh, you'll see that later, and actually at the bottom uh, of the bag, now the side is doubled up simply because I cut it, and because I didn't want to try and sew it, I just glued the overlapping pieces over each other, and it works really nicely actually, gives it a very nice, uh, strong, resisting, resistant uh, bottom to the bag. Um, burnishing is, for me, one of the most important processes throughout the whole build as it really does accent the bag well. Uh, bear in mind, depending what type of leather you're using, this may not work for you. So do look up the type of leather you're using and burnishing processes for that leather. So this is going to be the hidden stitching part of the bag. I am going to be drawing my stitching lines 1.5 centimeters away from the edge. I've already done one side and the second side is going to be coming on uh, next. This enables me to get a really pronounced edge that will be sticking out of the bag quite a lot and yet the stitching on the inside won't be visible. You can see I did not dye the inside of the bag at this point and Seeing the result, I suddenly realized that maybe I should have. So the next step is going to be me dyeing the inside of the bag. But at this point, I'm, I'm already looking at that uh, stitching work and I'm quite happy with the way it turned out. I did use the good, um, the good thread for stitching on the inside, even though it wouldn't be visible from the outside, simply because, and I'm very happy with the way it turned out and you can already see the bag shape is taking shape and looking fabulous and I'm very happy with that. So I went ahead and, and dyed the inside and you can see this black splodge th showing through uh, one of the sides there where there is basically too much dye and it's actually dyed a second time on the outside. It's a very weird, I did not expect it to go through but definitely tr make sure you know what you're doing uh, in the first, uh, from the start basically and decide what you want to dye before you actually start assembling as that will just save you a lot of time and energy and effort and avoid any possible mistakes like the one I did. At this point, I decide to attach, I decide I'm ready to attach my back uh, panel onto the bag. And you'll see why this is so important for me, because it simply adds so much extra strength and rigidity to the bag. Um, I did this in two steps. I started by uh, gluing down the bottom, making sure it was clamped up and secure before doing anything else. I just wanted to make sure those edges were very, very neat and tidy, just because it would be so hard to correct anything. Uh, later on down the line. At this point I am preparing the, uh, so this is the latching system for the flap. Um, I decided to try and give it a curve. So the it's basically two pieces of leather stuck together. Uh, you saw me use my hammer as a guide here because the inside piece is very slightly smaller than the outside piece. And this enabled me to actually preform it with the glue. The glue is holding it in uh, in this shape and it actually helps me give the bag a very nice shape and avoids creasing or superf superfluous creasing, so I can't speak anymore, superfluous creasing of uh, the hinge portion on the flap. Um, if you were to basically do it straight and have it flap, flat, the flap would, uh, whenever you open it, crease that hinge portion. So I decided to go for that as I thought it would last longer. Uh, preparing the edges now is very satisfying. Always, I always love preparing the edges. There's a lot of sanding involved ton of sanding involved but once you're happy that the edges are sanded you can go ahead and bevel them sand them once more then uh, dye them and then prepare them so what I usually do is once they're dyed I will take uh, trag gum uh, gum so Arabic gum basically you get many different forms of, of that kind of stuff but it, it works pretty much the same um, I give the sides a very nice generous portion of trag gum and give that a buff either using the Dremel you saw before on smaller pieces or on bigger pieces like this I do it by hand using a uh, so it's a wooden 
uh, handle or wooden stick, basically. Uh, this is made specifically for this, or I will use a cloth that also works very well. Um, I was having an issue trying to find some way of supporting my bag while I was doing the holes in the sides here to be able to give it the final stitch and the final form, and found that my saddle stitching pony, sorry, not saddle stitching, my stitching pony, um, was actually the perfect tool for that. So I've basically pretty much destroyed my stitching pony. <laughs> now it works fine, it's just got loads of punching marks and holes all down the side, but as it's a cheap stitching pony that I made myself, I really don't care too much. Um, so once I've done that, I can now go ahead and stitch up the side of the bag, starting with that uh, top portion, the flap hinge that you see there. Uh, do you remember the one centimeter gap that I left on the front and flap portion? Well, that is where I pre-glued the hinge in order to give it that extra strength. And that is where the hinge is now resting while I go ahead and saddle stitch this all together. Um, because of the shape of the bag and because I couldn't really hold it down easily, it was a slow stitching process, but very satisfying simply because the, the cable I'm using is really, really nice to use. And I was just very happy with the results. So far it was going very well. And um, I was very happy doing this. It was a very rewarding process to actually be able to take the time to stitch because you spent so long already actually building the bag so far that uh, you're really happy with it. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is that you can see now the inside stitching is not visible on the final product and that's why I decided to go for uh, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why I decided to go for a doubled panel uh, system with the inside panel being 1.4mm uh, leather and having the inside stitching and the outside panel being much firmer, 2.5mm uh, leather and hiding that inside stitching. So we get to see my burnishing process. Um, once I've applied the gum track, and there we go, used the, the dowel to, the wooden dowel to actually start uh, getting the burnish going. Once it's all done, I actually like to sand it again, very lightly, just to get rid of the excess bumps and things and to make sure it's, it's really straight and really clean uh, on the edges there. And then I will repeat the process where I put some more gum drag and burnish once more. And I find that even though repeating this process actually destroys the first, it partially destroys, it doesn't actually destroy much, but it just removes the very top layer of the initial burnish. I find it really adds to the final piece, even if it's a lot of extra work. Um, this is the flap. I am making the holes first all around the flap before making the holes at the top of the flap because I want to make all the holes first, then glue it to the hinge portion uh, that is already attached to the bag, then finish by putting in the extra holes uh, with my uh, pricking irons. Um, this enabled me to make sure most of the holes were done directly against my desk. Uh, while not attached to the bag, meaning that there was less of a chance of the glue between the hinge and the flap coming to pieces while I'm you know, punching through all the holes. So um, did it that way, I think it worked out well. Getting close to the end result here, but before I can actually start gluing up the final portion, which is the front flap, I have to figure out my closing mechanism, figure out where I want it. So. I've placed my thumb against it to see where it, where it should go, uh, finding the center of my piece, and this was a nerve-wracking uh, procedure. I've gone so far already in this build that I, I was terrified of making the slightest mistake here. Um, turned out okay, it wasn't as hard as I imagined, just make sure you always double check your measurements before you start poking holes into something you're uh, you've partially finished already. Um, again, two-step gluing here with the top going on first and then the bottle, bottom part going on second, making sure that all the edges lined up as best as possible. So the edges weren't all perfectly lined up, but that is fine. You can trim off some of the excess. It's not the easiest to do because of the shape of the bag and all that, but it's, it's absolutely doable and uh, wasn't a big issue. So I kept that um, for a few hours locked down and actually decided to uh, start finishing up some of the flap portion here, adding in the second part of my closing mechanism while it was glued down just to save a bit of, bit of time really. Um, I would not normally recommend touching your project while it's gluing down just because you want to avoid, uh, you really do want to avoid upsetting the glue at this point and moving the pieces around 
but because I wasn't actually moving the piece around too much, I decided it was worth doing while I'm at it. Um, I just love seeing the dye go on like that when once the edges are burnished. Oh, sorry, once the edges are sanded, I love seeing the dye come on. Um, again, it gives you a, a nice feeling of satisfaction. So the burnishing on the top was quite easy. I was a bit worried because I was very close to the sides. The sides actually go up quite far along the front piece. Um, and I was afraid I wouldn't be able to do that properly, but it was okay in the end. I did decide not to stitch all the way around. Uh, instead, I'll just be stitching the sides and bottom panels here of the front panel. Um, and not the top section of the panel, so not the section closest to the actual inside of the bag. I hope I'm making sense here. Uh, I mean, it makes sense in my mind. I hope you guys can follow. Again, decided that the best way of, use, of getting these holes punched through because of the weird shape of the bag was going to be using my saddle, my stitching pony once more. <clears throat> Sorry guys, got something in my throat weirdly. Um, so at this point, the bag's pretty much, pretty much done. Um, just getting rid of the excess little bits and pieces that might have got jammed in corners here uh, from all the sanding, giving it a nice coat of neat's foot oil to just fill in all the pores and making sure that the, the leather is as clean and as nourished as possible. And um, I believe I let this sit for a couple of hours, if not overnight, I can't remember exactly, um, just to make sure that the oil soaked in and uh, dried up as much as possible. And my final uh, touch is going to be using some very simple shoe polish here, clear shoe polish, just to give it a nice shine and to make it really look incredible. Again, shoe polish, you want to apply a generous amount in there, let it dry and then take off all the excess with a clean cloth. You can see it go very dark here at this portion. Don't worry, it will look much better afterwards once I've actually taken off most of it. It does remain very dark blue and uh, I have to say the final color is very pleasing. The final piece is really, really pleasing. I absolutely love it. Uh, I have not received the chain I have got uh, from Amazon yet, but as soon as I get it, it will go on this bag and this bag will be ready to sell. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to sell it yet, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not in it for the money. If anything, it might finish as a very nice present for a friend or something like that. So all in all, very happy with the way this turned out. And uh, there we go. Let's have a closer look at it. So this is the final product in all its glory, the back side uh, with the two hooks for the chain and the front uh, with the very intricate design, which I absolutely love. Are there things I could have improved upon it? Yes, they certainly are. Um, but am I happy with it? Oh God, yes, I'm very happy with it. Um, I have to admit for about a month and a half, this project was cut and dyed and had been lying on my desk just waiting for me to uh, pluck up the courage to actually get ahead and do it and I was very afraid that the final result would not resemble my initial thought for the bag. Um, this is one of the more intricate designs, ironically, that I've done so far um, and I really enjoyed the process of making it. It was very different, very fun and I am very pleased with the final result which I think is most definitely a very feminine and very uh, good looking evening bag and uh, I would love to know what you guys think about this in the comments below. So once more, please uh, let me know all your thoughts, comments, any tips and hints you might have. I would love to hear them in the comments below. And to, if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to make sure you get all the future videos. In the meantime, thanks a lot, guys, for watching. This is James signing off.